right guys back with another video this is a video i've been wanting to put together for quite some time it's going to be a little bit complicated i'm going to be using multiple different cameras matter of fact i'm using my cell phone right now i'm going to be talking about how to start filming your own hunts i know there seems to be a lot of interest in that lately i see a lot of questions on forums People asking what camera they should get, what should, how they should get started. I'm just going to tell you how I got started. Now, with this video, I'm going to try to make it interesting. I'm going to be using a lot of different clips from my videos to demonstrate different things that I'm talking about. It might make it a little bit easier to understand and make it more interesting. But, uh... I just want to let you know I'm not a professional by any means. I mean, my videos, you can tell I'm not a professional. But I got started with this stuff way back, actually, the year 1988. I bought a VHS camcorder and I started filming some hunts with me and my friends and having, have, actually having people follow me around with the camera to try to make just a VHS video. So oh, here's, here's a couple clips from that. Well, uh, probably one of the first things people want to know is what camera they should get. Well, if you want to start out on the high end, get yourself a good camera. I mean, a lot of this is dependent on your budget. This is one of those Canon HF G30s. I just got this last year. A really good camera, and I know a lot of people recommend it. It's got a 20 power zoom. But when I started my very first YouTube video, was with this very grainy wasn't very good quality but of all my videos it was the one I have the most views on currently and it all started with this right here after watching the video I realized I needed to upgrade a little bit so I bought a Sony Handycam this is the CX220 the small lightweight camera it does film in HD, and I think it gives pretty good pictures. And here's a few samples of some pictures I've taken with this camera. After I got the Sony, I started seeing a lot of stuff about the GoPros, and I thought, well, maybe I need to get a GoPro. So I broke down and bought a GoPro. Now, I did buy, this is the 3 Plus Black Edition, came with the remote, which this remote has come in very handy. But I'll tell you, I hear a lot of advice telling people to get a GoPro camera, that they uh, that's all you'll need. But this shoots a very wide angle, and you cannot see, a, you can have a deer 10 yards, and it looks like it's a lot farther. And here's a sample of what you get with the GoPro.
Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, these GoPros could be used in other ways. I use this for my dove hunting videos. I've used it for some fishing videos. And if you can find smart ways to use it, I mean, you can make your videos really interesting. One way is to add some time-lapse photography. Like I said, the, the GoPros have their place. I mean, you get a lot of B-roll footage. You get a lot of footage that <clears throat> helps make your video interesting. But then, after these cameras, I finally upgraded to the G30. And I'll tell you what, I really like the picture quality of the G30. And like I said, I'm not a professional, but when you, some of the stuff you shoot actually looks really good and it, it has that professional look to it. to get involved in when you start filming your own hunts and it will cost some money but if, like I said if you just want to start out I would recommend something like this to pick them up for around $200 you're not going to break the bank and even though I got the better camera I still use this in making some of my videos and I'm going to cover I'll cover that in a little bit of different ways I've used this camera since buying a G30. Alright, now we're going to talk about some different ways to hold your camera. Different ways that if you don't have a cameraman and you're a self-filmer like me, you got to invent some different ways to hold the camera. We're not going to talk about camera arms. I'm sure most people are aware of camera arms and what they are. So we're not going to cover those. I do have a couple of them that I use. We're going to talk about some other ways. And I'm sure everybody's aware of tripods. I actually have a, several different tripods. As you can see, i got some camo tape on it. But uh, these come in a lot handier than you would think. A lot of times if you're just standing in the woods and you want to talk about you know, what's going on, you're going to need a tripod if you don't have a cameraman. And I use these if I'm going to be mobile when I'm hunting, such as turkey hunting, I'll use a tripod for that. Another thing you uh, probably weren't aware of is I use, this is called a caddy buddy. That's a guy put these, I seen them on the internet and I ordered one. He makes several different kind of mounts. It's called a caddy buddy. And here's a few samples of how I use this. The next uh, mount we're going to talk about is my backpack mount. I made this out of just PVC, just a frame, square frame, stuffed into a backpack. Shouldn't be too hard to figure out how to make one. I use it with my GoPro. Put it on your back. And one of the things you're going to have to have with your GoPro is you're going to have to have a remote to make this thing work because you're not going to be able to reach up and turn it on and off as you need it. But I uh, 
use this in my fishing videos, my dove hunting videos. You'll see me different times. You'll see me clicking the remote on as I'm getting ready for some action. Almost caught that one. But this gives a unique angle. It's like right over the shoulder. Shows what's going on, what you're doing. Make, helps make your video a little bit interesting. Now here's some clips how I use the backpack mount. Here's another mount that I come up with. It's uh, like for a scope cam. It's over the scope. When I first started with this, I had a handlebar type mount from another action camera. I mean, I used that for a couple of years. It worked okay. I did have some problems with it, but I came up with this last year, and this is a much better system. If you look through my videos, I'll show you how to make one. They're pretty cheap to make. I have these on several of my guns now. But uh, you're going to see some of the videos, What it's with the older mount, but you'll get to see some of the action I got squirrel hunting with this kind of mount. It really, really gives a good point of view with the camera because you're able to see the game. Whatever you're looking through the scope, if you adjust it right, that's what the camera sees. You can zoom it in so you can get, you know, it's not far away, you can zoom it in so you can get a real nice picture. But here's some clips of squirrel hunting using this type of mount so I can show you what you get. The squirrel hunting videos turned out pretty good. I mean, you could see a lot, even when you shot the rifle, the recoil didn't really affect the picture that much. But when I first started out with this type of mount, with the handlebar mount on a muzzle loader, I had several problems. One of the first problems I had was the recoil would knock the battery off my camera. There's a clip of what happened there. Well, guys. I have to say I'm pretty disappointed this morning. Earlier this morning I shot at a coyote and right when I shot the battery come off my camera. I had the camera mounted on top of my scope. So for whatever reason it didn't save the footage because the battery came out. Well, I just shot a deer and the same thing happened with the deer. And I would have had some pretty good footage because there was a very large 8 point with this deer. This happened to be a buck, buck again. I thought it was a doe. But I left the camera roll for a while to get some footage of that eight point. And it was kind of pushing this thing around which I thought it was a doe. So I had to shoot over top of the buck's back to take this deer. And when I checked it, the same thing happened. When I shot, the battery came off the camera again. And for whatever reason, it just took a couple seconds of footage and that was, that's all it saved. So, kind of disappointing when that happens because I would have had some pretty good video, but I guess that's the way it goes with hunting. Well, I've since fixed the battery coming off just with a couple pieces of electrical tape, but I still had a problem with recoil with that old system knocking the scope, knocking the camera around on the scope. Just, I had problems with that too. Here's another clip of a problem I had with heavy recoil. Hi guys, hunting with the muzzleloader today. Uh, got my camera on top. Let me tell you what just happened. Last year I had some trouble with the battery coming off the camera. Well, I was 
sitting here, and I got squirrels and chipmunks running all around me, and I could hear I could hear a deer walking. So I'm looking around, trying to see, you know, where the noise is coming from. I stood up and turned around real slow. And when I turned back around, here I had a deer staring at me at about 30 yards. So all I could do was put the camera on real quick and take a shot. Well, what happened was it only recorded just a few seconds right before the shot. And at the shot from the recoil, it just quit. So I'm not gonna actually have the bullet impact on film. So now I come up with this system. After the season was over, I come up with this system. You could find a video on how to make it using uh, scope mounts and a couple other pieces of hardware. I haven't had a chance to try it out with heavy recoil the muzzle loader, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be pretty sturdy. I mean this camera it's mounted really sturdy so we're going to hopefully have some footage this year using this mounting system on the muzzle loader. So now let's talk a little bit about some of the other things you're going to get into with filming your own hunts. The different accessories. I know a lot of people use microphones, the shotgun mics and stuff. I do have one I just don't use it. I know a lot of people talk about the audio quality of videos, how that will make the video. I like the audio quality I'm getting now. I mean, you can hear the deer walking. You can hear them, you know, you can hear what's going on around you, the birds singing. This is the early muzzleloader season here in Pennsylvania. You're only allowed to take an antlerless deer. As you could hear, I still got turkeys all around me. But uh, I don't know how well that's going to come out on videotape. Everything kind of happened kind of quick there. But uh... all right, one of the things you want to do when you're making videos is try to have a nice, steady camera shot. I mean, sometimes that'll make or break your video. If you get a lot of shaking around, I mean, it's just going to not be enjoyable to watch. So you want to try to keep everything nice and steady. And I know it's going to be very hard to do that when the wood in the woods when the action's taking place, but you need to try to find a way to make a nice steady camera shot. So if you have somebody following you that's going to be filming you as you're walking or whatever, you want to have some kind of rig to help steady the camera. Now this is one of those commercial rigs. You mount the camera on it. it has different. You can configure it. You can. Uh, Make it long. You could do a lot of stuff with it. I have this rig. I don't like it. I'll probably be selling it on eBay or selling it to somebody just to get rid of it. But I uh, may even have a giveaway on one of my uh, videos for the camera rig. But here's what I got that I use a lot. I made this out of PVC. I got the idea from the, I believe his channel is called The Frugal Filmmaker. If you look, he has a lot of neat ideas, cheap ways to do things for making videos and stuff. So you really want to check out his channel. I'll put a link in the description. But I got this idea from him. I mean, this thing is nice and steady. You can grip it from different angles. And I do use this when I'm filming wildlife, just for like different videos with just wildlife footage. And here's some samples of what I get with this, with a nice steady camera shot. Yeah, he's a big guy coming out of there, isn't he? Yeah, he's big, that first one came out. He's a young one. Look at him. He's a new one. No, no, you want to see it? Going the wrong way. Now, once you start to get a little bit more serious, you're going to want to invest in a couple other things. One of the things you're going to want is a LANC controller. This, uh, I use this with my G30 there. Now your cheaper cameras, like the Sony I have and stuff, there's nowhere to plug this in. 
so I mean not all cameras will be able to use one of these but when you if you have a camera that will use it this will come in very handy this will help you zoom in and out turn the camera on and off without a lot of movement So uh, once you start advancing and start taking filming real serious, you're going to want something like this. This is just a cheap one here. You're also going to want some kind of light so that if you're going to talk on camera and it's early morning or dark, you don't want to be doing that with you know, a black screen. You want to cast a little bit of light, so you're going to want some kind of light. Now, this is one of the camera arms I use. I have a couple of them. This one I have it. As a bracket, I mount it right to my tree stand. I actually made another bracket to mount it to another stand. But uh, we're not going to cover the camera arms. There's a whole lot of them on the market. So uh, your pocketbook will tell you which one you're going to get. The other thing with the G30 that really comes in handy, this camera has a remote. I could zoom in, zoom out. I could turn the camera on and off. This is really handy. Like I said, not all cameras have stuff like this, but if you get serious, you're going to want something like this down the road. This is the rig I use for my smaller camera. I mean, it's these are pretty easy to find. You can find them all over the internet. I'm sure there's a few stores that will carry them. But they really help make a nice, smooth camera shot. You can hold it at different angles, hold it down low, tilt your camera much much steadier than holding your camera like this and trying to get a shot with it so I really recommend something like this for some of your video shots when you're talking about stuff or you want somebody to follow you really really good investment here well I hope you guys that are starting out appreciate this video I know it's gonna be a heck of a thing to edit together I use uh, I just use Windows Movie Maker when I edit my videos I don't have anything fancy like most people, I don't have a lot of money to throw away on camera equipment and stuff. I try to do the best I can by coming up with my own ideas and doing things a little bit different. So I hope some of these tricks helped you out. I hope some of the tips helped you out. I really appreciate you watching my video. If you liked what you saw, please hit that subscribe button. I'd really like to have you as a viewer. And if you send me a link to your channel, I'll subscribe as well. But thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.